Welcome to The Mental Breakdown. I'm Dr. Bernie Wilkinson, and today's podcast is about finding a way to climb out of the rut. But first, a few announcements. As always, I would like to remind you about our books that are found on Amazon Kindle. The Handbook for Raising an Emotionally Healthy Child, Part 1, Behavior Management, is available and a great resource for parents who want to find uh, new ways and maybe improve their ways of managing children with uh, various behaviors, uh, normal behaviors, challenging behaviors. Uh, it, it helps you identify what are typical behaviors versus those that may be a little bit more atypical and really helps provide some understanding about why some of those behaviors happen and what you can do about it. The Elimination Diet Manual is available also on Amazon Kindle. It's a great way to look to see if anything in your diet or your child's diet may be affecting their behavior, uh, emotions, physical health, emotional health. Uh, it's a great, another great uh, resource and strategy for exploring some of those issues. And uh, of course, finally, the uh, Parenting Your ADHD Child course is up and running on paydllc.com. Uh, 21 lessons that uh, really focus on many of the things that we deal with in therapy sessions. Uh, the, the 21 lessons, it, it is just about uh, probably 15 sessions worth of information uh, that you can get in the course there, all for the cost really of just one uh, therapy session here in our office. So uh, it's a great resource. Once you get access to it, you get access to it forever. And we will be adding new lessons in the future. And so, you know, if you get it now, you can get through and learn from the, the 21 lessons that are already available. Uh, but then, of course, we'll be uh, all set and prepared for uh, new lessons that are added at some point in the future. So uh, check that out. Another great resource, lots of uh, additional information, lots of additional papers and, and worksheets and strategies that are provided all as part of that uh, course. So check that out at paydllc.com. Links to all of these things can be found in the show notes. Uh, they're all ready for you. So, all right. I think that that's all of the announcements. Uh, I hope you enjoy this podcast about, again, getting out of the rut. breakdown. I'm Dr. Bernie. And today's question comes from Jason, who wrote, I am stressed out. I feel like I am in a rut where I do the same thing every day. I get up, go to work, come home, eat dinner, veg in front of the TV, go to bed, repeat. I feel like I have nothing that really excites me anymore. I used to hang out with friends and even played sports, but now I am just blah. Yes, he actually wrote blah. I just have no energy for anything else. What do you recommend for someone who is deep in the rut of life and does not have the energy to climb out? Well, Jason, that's, that's a fantastic question. And I, I think it's one that requires a little bit of uh, consideration and a little bit of background. You know, many times in life, we get into situations where we just, like you said, go through those routines. We, we go through the routine of, of getting up, going to our job, and um, it's really difficult, especially for people who have jobs that maybe aren't as strict with time. Uh, you know, back when I used to work at, uh, I used to work at some retail stores and uh, at a movie theater and some different places like that, but you had a, a, a specific time that you were supposed to be at work and a specific time that you were getting off of work. And when it when it's so rote in that way, uh, it's a little bit easier to to plan other parts of your of your life and other parts of your day. But as we uh, move into jobs and positions that are a little less rigid, uh, so you get to work, perhaps you're supposed to be at work at at eight o'clock and Perhaps the idea is to be getting off of work around five o'clock. If your job is really one where 
you get off work when you finish your work, then it becomes much more difficult because you find we find ourselves staying a little bit later. Uh, we do a little bit more. We we find ourselves in this routine of uh, working, coming home, going to bed, and going back to work. And so it really requires a little bit of effort and a little bit of um, uh, determination to overcome some of those routines and some of those uh, obligations. You know, we really, it, this is uh, challenging as well for parents uh, because parents, you know, we get up, we get our kids ready, we take them to school uh, or get them where they need to be. We go to work and then we get off of work and we get the kids and we take care of the kids and put them to bed and then we go to bed and the next morning the same thing. And so we need to, uh, when, when I've talked to people that are in the situation such as what you're in, Jason, we really have to work to identify a few things so that we can you know, get out of that monotony, we can get out of that rut and, and find some happiness, find some things that, that energize you. I mean, it, from, your, from your message, it, you know, it certainly sounds like you are in this uh, droll routine, this, this routine that doesn't really excite you a whole lot. It doesn't uh, energize you. And, and in fact, it certainly sounds like, uh, you know, you said you have no energy for anything else. So, so it really seems to be, be draining your, your energy reserves uh, for most other things in life. So there are a few things that we can do to escape that monotony. But before we get to that, I, I really want to make sure that I, that I emphasize the fact that these strategies, all of these strategies, are going to require work um, and perhaps even a, a lot of work, a, a lot of determination. Um, it may lead to frustration uh, because one of the biggest challenges that we have in these situations is that it's challenging to get started. You know. Jason, when you when you describe things, and, and I talk to lots of people who describe situations like this, where it's just really difficult to get started because if you don't have the energy now, just saying, okay, I'm going to have the energy to do this, does not necessarily mean that the energy is going to be there. And so it requires a lot of effort and it requires you to um, be determined and, and be effortful in your uh your, your, your drive to, to get some of these things in place. So it's going to take some work. It's going to feel like work, but after a little bit of time, it will get easier. It will become just a natural part of your daily routine or weekly routine or however, uh, as you'll see, it depends on kind of how you structure things. Uh, but it, once it becomes a part of your regular routine, it becomes much, much easier. Um, but it will require a lot of work work to begin with and you know that's it's the first few weeks that most people have a hard time getting through if you can get through the first probably two to six weeks i know that's a big range but if you can get through those first two to six weeks or so uh you you will find that you'll do much better and it'll get much much easier so with that little caveat in place uh, let's talk about uh, the seven steps that I think will help get you uh, where you want to be and, and in that better place in your life. All right, so step one. Step one is my typical step one, and, and, and that is some self-reflection. You, you really need to look at yourself and, and see not necessarily what makes you happy now, because as your email suggests, there, there's not a lot that really excites you right now. But look back at your life, look at the past, and, and see what made you happy in the past. You, know, you, you mentioned hanging out with friends and, and playing sports and stuff. So what was it about that that you really enjoyed? Was it the people that you were hanging out with? Was it the activities that you did? What, what was it and who was it with? When we can self-reflect like that and we can look back and we can see what things really gave us some energy and, and, and gave us some drive in the past, many times as we're working through some of these other steps, we can recreate some of that and you'll find that your body sort of gets back into that routine much, much easier than it, you know, it's much easier to get back into a routine that you used to do than it is to create brand new routine, routines that you've never done before. And so that this initial step of self-reflection uh, many times will help identify some of those kinds of things. 
Step two is reconnecting with others. Now, what I'm talking about here in step two, which is gonna be a little bit different in step three, step two is getting back uh, and reconnect with people, again, maybe that you identified there in step one, uh, whether it's uh, family members that you used to spend time with or, or friends from school or, or friends from work or, or, or whatever, reconnect with those people that you used to spend time with and that you used to uh, have some of that extra energy, that you used to have some of that enthusiasm, some of that passion for, for hanging out with and spending time with. Work to reconnect with them. Send them an email, um, find them on Facebook or, or, or you know, personal message them on Facebook or, or Twitter or something, but get back in touch with them and, and see what they're doing. See, uh, see what they have going on. See if they're still doing some of those things that you used to do that gave you so much energy and made you feel better. Many times they are. And it's so again, it's easy to shift right back into some of those activities. Sometimes they're not, but at times when they're not, they are often looking for the same things that you are. They're, they're often finding themselves wishing that they were back involved in things and doing some of the things that they used to do. And so that, that little uh, reconnection, that, that reaching out to them makes it much, much easier, not just for you, but for them, because now you're both uh, kind of working in the direction of uh, improving things in your life and, and getting, out of, getting out of the rut that you uh, find yourself in. Step three, is connecting with new people. Now, this one's, of course, is a little bit more challenging, uh, but I don't mean necessarily new people that you've never met before, people that you don't know. I mean, perhaps people who you just haven't spent extra time with or, or time outside of work or outside of school, um, those people. Many times we work with people in our offices um, you know, depending on where you work, it could be anywhere from five to a hundred people that you work in the same office building with, uh, or in the same location with, and you don't spend any time. You don't know anything about them outside of work hours. So taking a little bit of time to get to know some of them and saying, Hey, you know, let's go, uh, let's go get some something to eat after work or let's go have lunch together or um, and, and again of course we're not necessarily talking about anything romantic or anything like that it could just be a couple of guys hanging out it could be you know uh, you know two two women it could be a man and women it, it doesn't matter we're not talking about romantic or anything like that we're just talking about creating a connection with people um, with whom that you maybe have never met with before outside of the office, but just to see if there is uh, some kind of connection, some kind of spark that will get things rolling in the direction of creating some new habits and some new routines. Um, you know, it, it, it understandably, it, it's challenging. Uh, Jason, you don't mention if you're married or anything like that. It is challenging if you're in a relationship and you sort of uh, part of that rut that you're in is uh, obli or obligations uh, for your spouse or for your significant other. It, it's tough, but we have to have that conversation with them. You know, Jason, the, the email that you sent to me, for example, that would be a great conversation if, if you are in fact married. I'm kind of making some assumptions, but uh, it, for those of you who are listening who find yourself in a similar situation, um, if you if you have a spouse or a significant other, it's important to share that with them. Say, say, hey, look, you know, I, I feel like I'm in this rut. I got to find some new things to do. Um, either, you know, I would love for us to do some of that together, but I also recognize that I need to do some of it uh, with other people as well. And, you know, I would need to s split some of my time and, and spend some time with other people. And um, so this is what I'm going to do and, and create some of those new connections and new relationships. Uh, it, Hopefully, your significant other will, will understand. And uh, if you approach them with it in this way, they're much more likely to understand uh, than if you, uh, if you do it without talking with them. Uh, communication is so important. But this isn't a podcast about relationships. This is a podcast uh, about getting out of the rut. And so we'll talk about those relationship things uh, at another podcast. Step four. For step four, what we're going to try to do is um, find something that gets you out of the house. You know, Jason, in, in your email, 
it, it sounds as though the only time you really leave your house is to go to work. Uh, you, you mentioned getting up, going to work, then you come home from work, you have dinner, you veg in front of the TV, and then you go to bed and uh, do it all again. Well, we need to find some things to get you out of the house. Now, this may mean, and, and especially initially, it may mean finding some activities that you do right after work, uh, things that you do before you even get back home. Uh, for many people, once you get home, it's really difficult to leave again. So if you decide to uh, start playing uh, a sport again, you, you decide that you reconnected with some of your friends and you want to go play you know, slow pitch softball again or something, uh, it may be important to bring your gym bag to work with you so that you change clothes before you leave the office or before you leave work and just go straight to the fields from there. Going home first, especially initially, is going to make it much, much more difficult for you to I leave the house again to go do what you need to do. Uh, we have that, there's sort of that switch in our brain that, uh, you know, as soon as you walk in the front door of your house, you immediately want to, okay, now it's time to just, uh, it, it's, a, it's like a learned um, behavior that our body goes through when we get into those situations. As soon as we walk through the door, we just want to sit down, we just want to watch TV, we want to get back into that rut. Our, our bodies find ruts very comfortable, even, even if we don't psychologically. Uh, our, our body uh, appreciates those ruts and routines, and so it's important that we uh, avoid those kinds of uh, pitfalls as best we can. So, you know, if you decide that you want to play slow pitch softball with your friends, take your gym bag uh, to the office with you. If you decide that you want to do, uh, you and your friends are going to start doing Wine Wednesday. And on, on Wednesdays, you're going to meet at, for happy hour and have some wine and talk and, and just spend some time together. It's great. But again, it may be best to go there straight after work instead of going home first and then trying to go back out. Uh, that that uh, break in between uh, of going into the house can really cause some problems. So uh, again, step four, uh, whether it's Wine Wednesday, uh, some athletic event, uh, some team sport thing, or, or, or whatever it is, something outside of the house, again, try to schedule it in a way that uh, allows you to be able to go straight to it after work without going home first. Step five. Step five, we're going back now and we're doing a little bit more introspection. And, and, and here's why. We've reconnected with some friends. We're, we're con trying to connect with some new friends. We're trying to do some things to get you outside of the house. All of those things involve other people. Now, that's great. However, it's not always realistic for that to happen. Sometimes we have to do things on our own. And so step five, the, the introspection here, what we're really talking about is what do you do that um, helps meet some of your goals? Are, are, you, are you living to work? Are you, are you living for your work? Or are you working so that you can live? And that kind of gets us to the point of and, and the the issue of of hobbies it can lead us to a, lots of other things as well but to me I, I ask almost everyone that i meet with what are your hobbies what do you enjoy doing and it doesn't have to be something with other people and, so, and and many times it's it's critical that we have things that we do on our own that don't involve other people you know if, if it's raining outside you're not gonna be able to go play softball so what are you going to do well, you, you can get back into that rut and just go back to doing what you used to do. Or you can, if you have a hobby, you can start doing some of those things on your own and, and enjoying that time because, again, it's going to give you some energy. It's going to get you going and, and make you feel good. So level uh, step five is that introspection of what are your actual goals? What do, what do you want? out of life? Or do you just want to be the person who goes to work and comes home and then goes back to work? Because if you do, that's that's fine. Jason, it certainly doesn't sound like that's what you want to do. And so we need to do that introspection to figure out, okay, what what satisfies you? What makes you happy? What as you, as an individual, as a, as a person, what does it mean to you? Um, and what do you want to accomplish? And then that get, leads us directly to step six, which is we have the routine, we have these connections, find a hobby. We have to have something that we're passionate about. Hobbies are 
things that we're passionate about. Hobbies are things that we do, it's sort of by definition. Hobbies are things that we do just for the sake of doing them. They may be meaningless, they may uh, serve no real purpose, but we enjoy doing them. Uh, people who enjoy doing puzzles, for example. You sit there and you work on a puzzle, a thousand piece puzzle, it could take you weeks to get it done. And when you finish it, what do we do? We tear it all apart, put it back in the box. It really didn't serve any particular purpose, except that it was something that was enjoyable, something that uh, made you happy, something that uh, gave you a little bit of, uh, of a drive, something that you were looking forward to. So hobbies can be anything, um, anything from puzzles to, to knitting. Uh, I, I know I have a friend, a uh, person that I know whose hobby is brewing beer. Uh, she just really enjoys uh, brewing her own uh, craft beer. I, I used to listen to a radio station and, and the host like every six months or so, he would um, he would change hobbies and he would do something different. And so for a while, he was really into horses. And so he was uh, doing horseback riding lessons and he would go to uh, horse races and horse shows and, and things like that. He just poured himself into that. After about six months, he was like, OK, well, I'm going to move on to something else. And then he took on blacksmithing. Now, that's not certainly not something that we all can take on. But where he lived in, in his uh, shed and, and, and some work areas in, that he had at the house, he was able to do that. So he took on this uh, activity of um, blacksmithing. And so he was creating and building all of these things. He, he, took, a, he took a couple of classes and, and started doing that. So it doesn't matter what the hobby is, just find a hobby just find something that you can do for yourself by yourself that doesn't require anybody else that when you get home you can change clothes and you can go and, and do this hobby um, again something to look forward to something that you enjoy now the final step step seven is really looking at some lifestyle things now whenever i hear somebody say that they have no energy um, many times that means motivation. Many times that means, you know, I, I'm just sort of uh, bored. Sometimes it means that they're depressed. Sometimes it means that they're, um, that they're sad and, and down and, and those kinds of issues. But other times it, it really comes back to some lifestyle choices. What, what are you eating? What are you, how much do you exercise? Uh, those, how well are you sleeping? Those types of things are, are massive issues. And so, Jason, reflecting on and, and looking at your diet, how, how well are you eating? Are you, are you eating uh, high carbs and, and lots of um, uh, empty calories, uh, junk foods that are just, um, that make you feel good for the moment, but that we also know tend to drain us uh, of the energy that we want our food to give us. So, you know, look at your diet and see what that tells you. Uh, exercise we know that we need to exercise at least 30 minutes three to four times a week at least that's sort of sort of uh, the minimum amount that we can do to get the the, the benefit uh, energy wise and, and physiologically the the amount of exercise that we need to to really have some benefit so you know how much are you walking uh, you know if we kind of are pulling some of these things together you know certainly you're, you're maybe you spend a night or two going out and, and doing things outside of the house. You're spending a couple of nights a week uh, doing your hobby. And then you're spending a couple of nights a week exercising and, and getting out of the house to go for walks or you know if you have a treadmill, uh, whatever the case may be. Find some time to build in the, that you know, 30 minutes, uh, three or four times a week of uh, mild to moderate aerobic exercise of walking, uh, jogging, um, riding a bike. It, it really doesn't necessarily matter what it is. Um, and in fact, something we really don't get to do a whole lot uh, around here or that I don't see people doing a whole lot around here in, in this area of Central Florida is rowing. Row, rowing is a fantastic, not just cardiovascular, but it really works your, your entire body. Um, fantastic thing. So, um, but any type of exercise will do. And then of course, sleep. Make sure that you're getting enough sleep. Uh, going to bed at decent times. When you get home from work, if, if you're the a typical person who, who talks in the way that your email suggests, you know, you get home from work 5.30 to 6 o'clock, you, you eat dinner 6, 6.30 or so, and then you start winding down, 
you're, you're probably sitting in front of the TV for a couple of hours every night and those hours just drain by. And so you find yourself, and again, many people find themselves in the situation, they sit down and start watching TV at, you know, seven, eight o'clock. All of a sudden it's midnight. Oh man, I got to go to bed. And so they go to bed and then they're getting up at five or six o'clock the next morning. And that five or six hours of sleep just isn't enough. You, you Again, you, you have to sleep to recharge your batteries. You have to exercise to recharge your batteries. You have to eat well to charge your batteries. So step seven really is, lifestyle related you know, taking care of those things that you have control over you have you have complete control over how what you eat how well you uh, how much you sleep and and how much you exercise so uh, take control of those things and, and you will find uh, you'll probably find that your energy will start increasing just simply with fixing step seven at step seven so all right so there's your seven steps you know, go back through them work through that process uh, it, again, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be something that you're going to jump into the first day and just like, oh, here we go. This is great. Everything is perfect. It'll feel good the first couple of days, perhaps, because it's new. It's you got it going. And, and I've talked about these kinds of things in many, many podcasts before. First couple of days are going to be easy. That first time that something inside of you says, you know what, let's just not do it today. The first time that, that happens, you got to battle it. You got to overcome that and you got to say, nope, I'm going to do it today because that's what I told myself I'm going to do. So I'm going to do it and, and make yourself do it anyways. Don't let yourself find the excuse not to do it. It's going to work. It's going to try to find an excuse and a, and a reason not to do what it needs to do. But you have to battle that. You have to fight that. Don't give in to it. Push through and, and you know start some of these new habits and new routines and, and I think that you will find that your energy will return, uh, you, your happiness will return. You'll be out of that rut. Uh, sure, you'll still be sure you will still have your your, your nine to five job, uh, but you will also have a life. And and having a life, well, that that really uh, motivates us and makes us feel good and, and drives us to where we want to go. So. All right, Jason, I hope that's helpful. I hope it's helpful for lots of other people. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions or recommendations that, that you found helpful, please write to me on Facebook or, or, or Twitter. Uh, all of those links are in the show notes. I uh, would love for you to write a review of the, of the uh, podcast on iTunes. Uh, rate us, rank us. It's a really great way to uh, help other people find us and um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to do lots of things. We're trying to do everything we can to get this uh, information out because, um, well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, other stuff out there and we just hope that uh, folks will benefit from some of this. Uh, again, what we hope is just practical information uh, that you can do to improve your life and make things better for you. So, all right, until next time, I'm Dr. Bernie. Stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.